If my mascara runs, it's Revlon. <laughs> Would all those who are once homeless please join me at the podium? Um, while they're coming up, I'll tell you, uh, one of the things that we recently did at Up With Women was we conducted a survey uh, of over 500 people across the country. And one of the interesting things that we found there was that 90% of women believe that homelessness can happen to anybody. But only 9% of them actually thought of women when they first thought of the homeless. I brought these women up here and these children for two reasons. Thank you, darlings. It's good to see you. Uh, First of all, I want you to see our faces when you think of the homeless. Because we represent what's possible when no one is left behind. These women have incredible stories. They're you know, successful businesswomen, a community worker, uh, a successful politician. We have a straight A student, uh, a PhD, a PhD, um, uh, someone who's getting a PhD, I don't know what you call that, <laughs> an educator. You know, and I'd encourage you to come onto our website and read their stories because they will inspire you and really break those stereotypes. The second reason why I brought them up here is because this award would not have the meaning that it merits if we weren't all up here accepting this together. Without these women and children, Up With Women would still be a distant hope that was conjured up on a dusty bunk bed at 86 Madison, which was the place where I had my shelter. Stop 86, we have a couple of people who used to live there. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this work would not be great work if I was the only one standing up sharing my story. Because we stand together, we prove unequivocally that homelessness is not a dead end and that success belongs to everybody. I'm also honoring these women because they have committed to engaging in what I would call, and several of, of our, my friends up here also would agree, this is the most difficult volunteerism of all, the sharing of one's story. It's incredibly satisfying work, but it doesn't come without the promise of some personal heartache. We're not the only ones who get exposed when we decide to share our stories. Some of us have dealt with the resentment of our children because the dirty little secret is out. Others have borne the heartbreak of our parents for old wounds reopened. Some of us have decided to share our story despite the risk that they might be teased in the classroom. Others have accepted the possibility that they might be undermined in the workplace once the story gets out. Those of us who are abuse survivors have sometimes had to deal with legal threats and sometimes even death threats whenever we share our, share our stories in a public way. We do this because we're giving a hand up to the future instead of pointing fingers at the past. We do this because we know that the alternative, silence, would only result in more discrimination, more isolation, and more suffering for all. When you think of that, do we really have a choice? So this is for you, darlings. It's your courage, commitment, love, and conviction that gives me confidence that the fate of women and children tomorrow will be better than it is today. Please help me in honoring these women.